Hey, I'm Erica. And I'm Jules. Most people have at least one thing that they can't or won't eat. Yeah, we're definitely like that. We started this podcast to talk about the gluten-free food industry. Like new products and some of the stories behind your favorite brands. And living life with a specialty diet and also some important healthcare topics. Since we're basically both broken inside. You had me at eat. You don't get to laugh. This is not an appropriate time for you to laugh. You laugh at every episode. Welcome to You Had Me to Eat. Jules is silently laughing. Look, she's still in her sling, everybody, but no boot. No boot. No I'm boot. Out of the boot. I'm officially out of the boot. Yeah. She's graduated, uh, and we are keeping her in our thoughts and prayers. <laughs> It's, pro- it's because of all of your thoughts and prayers that I'm out of the booth. So thank yeah, you, was- everyone, for your thoughts and prayers. So nice of you all yes. to think of Jules and yes. her food. Thank uh, you. So, yeah, and your hair looks great. I don't know who's been washing it, but it looks phenomenal. <laughs> so I wash it way less than you think I do. <laughs> Good for you. Um, this is like day six with this hair that was in Vegas. So you know yeah. it's got that this like the casino smoke in it. Oh, and I'm just like, whatever. It. Yeah. I'm just but see, yeah, I'm... you are blessed with two arms. And so you can put it in the messy do, bun. So do you have two arms. <laughs> yeah. They do have a messy bun. So yeah. You know, so I'm very, don't take that messy bun for granted, girl. I won't. I won't. Not anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're here, we're back. Um, we, uh, were absent because Man, uh, fancy food got in the way, which I'm fine with because fancy food is great. It is a large trade show that is a precursor to uh, Natural Products Expo West. Uh, there's a lot of fancy food, meaning basically um, jamon, like a lot of prosciutto, just endless rows of prosciutto, a lot <laughs> yes, of cheese. A lot of cheese. Um, but yeah, some really good products. So I'd, I'd love to show, uh, to share with you some products that I found, but we'll be highlighting new products throughout the rest of basically Q1 and Q2 yeah. of this year, because that's really when the new products get launched. Um, lots of new holiday products coming to, which is bonkers to think about next holiday in January, but you know, uh, package good products already are in the making for that. So uh, that's going to be really a lot of a chunk of the show. Um, But first, we want to recognize a special holiday that's coming up on Sunday is Chinese New Year. And when I was in Las Vegas, there were incredible decorations for it. I I mean, they go all out. Um, But what's interesting is that I am not really familiar with, obviously, Chinese New Year food, and especially food that we can make gluten-free for Chinese New Year. So if you are are celebrating and you just want to take advantage of another food-friendly holiday that you can make, Jules, I'd love for you to share um, one of my personal favorites that you make. Yeah, well, so it's interesting because um, I I was like you, like I wasn't... um, super familiar with the, you know, the foods that were associated with Chinese New Year several years ago, but I had had so many readers reach out looking for help with recipes for the Chinese New Year, because Mm -hmm. just like any other um, major holiday throughout the year, it's associated with food. I mean, there's just, you know, food culture is just so imbued um, throughout. And so I had to really familiarize myself with it. And the foundation for a lot of Chinese recipes is this wonton wrapper, which is obviously historically not made with gluten-free flour. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're talking about the classics like egg rolls, um, wontons, um, you know, crab rangoon, um, dumplings, pot stickers, all of those things can be made with a wonton wrapper, but those are not something that you can just go to the store and buy gluten-free, the wonton wrapper foundation for that. So um, a number of years ago, I came up with a gluten-free wonton wrapper recipe, and it has become one of the most popular recipes on my site. And I think it's because there just is nothing out there on the market that is a gluten-free wonton wrapper. And there are really not that many recipes out there for it. And it's an awesome recipe. It's really, really easy to make. It's one cup of my flour, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, one egg plus one egg white. And um, this could um, actually be made with aquafaba and um, just two tablespoons of water. 
And it's because my flour has a natural stretch to it that makes this recipe, just like pie crust and other types of wrapped applications, it makes it easy to make and wrap around whatever you want to make. So people who've tried to make gluten free like wonton wrappers for things like dumplings before have um, had failures because when they make it and they roll it out and they try to wrap it, it cracks and breaks. So people who use this recipe have, um, you know, really found it to be really revolutionary because using my flour, it works. So that I just checked today, there's like 194, um, four or five star reviews on this particular recipe. So it's, um, it's definitely worth using or giving it a try if it's something that you're interested in doing for the Chinese New Year. And um, one of the main recipes for Chinese New Year is the dumpling. And because mm -hmm. the reason why that is, and I had to look up this food history. This is so fascinating. I love, you know, me and my, my food history. I just love, love this food stuff. history. Yes, that's me. Um, but the um, the legend behind the, um, the dumpling at the Chinese New Year is that the number of dumplings that you eat during Chinese New Year predicts the amount of money that you'll make in the upcoming year. So um, I, I, don't, I don't love that <laughs> tradition because I would be the kind of person who could not put away quite as many of the dumplings as maybe someone else. But, um, you know, I guess if you if you're you know into that, you're going to want to make maybe smaller dumplings <laughs> then you can eat more. But um, you can fill the dumplings with whatever you want. Traditionally, they're, they're um, most often filled with pork. But the recipe on my website um, for dumplings is a vegetable dumpling filling. And you, know, you can really kind of fill it with whatever you want to. But it is a very I'm so impressed. Recipe. This I is know. one of your readers, yeah. and um, I know that it's horrible because it's obviously on an iPhone photo of it, but it is on your recipe share site. And this came into my feed this morning. I'm like, those look incredible. I'm she did so a great job for her. Yeah. So people who are listening and not watching this on the YouTube feed, um, Erica just showed a picture on my GF Jules gluten-free recipe share site on Facebook. One of the um, readers posted a picture. She had made these gorgeous gluten-free um, dumplings with that wonton recipe with my GF Jules flour today in anticipation of Chinese New Year. And she said, I just can't, the biggest challenge is going to be waiting to eat them until Saturday night. So I was like, yeah, they look, they're gorgeous. And um, she used a half, half of them were with pork filling and half of them were with a vegetable filling. And so, um, but, but the smile on her face was just yeah, priceless. Yeah. 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 So anyway, anyone who's celebrating or anyone who's just hungry for amazing Chinese food, that is the recipe to look for. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I love when we're able to provide um, answers for people who are yeah. looking for specific food holidays. Sure. And I know that you are the person that I always go to personally. So it's so nice to be able to have you on a podcast and being like, what are you doing for this holiday? How yeah. can you make this you know, gluten-free? And um, you know, this, this podcast, I wanted to be careful to not make it an infomercial for Jules's products, <laughs> but honestly, like her, her flower is so incredible that that's why I lean on her a lot for a lot of this, re the recipes for the holidays, because when, before I even really knew her, she provided us with products that made it feel just like we were eating regular food. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I don't want this to be like, just buy Jules this flour and you can make this, but like for real, it really is a superior product and, and it's helpful, obviously, if you've been on her recipe page to, to help people feel normal, some sense of normalcy in these food holidays. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm not here to just talk about that and like try to push anything on anyone, but with certain recipes, it makes a much bigger difference than with others. And mm -hmm. when you read people's comments like that, when you say like, I've, I've tried this. I've, and, and I, you know, it doesn't work and I've given up or whatever. And then, and then, you know, you, we're here to provide encouragement and we just want people to, to not give up and to not think, you know, my gluten-free life is over or I can't have this certain tradition or this certain um, recipe or a moment back in my life that I used to treasure with my family or, you know, a traditional, um, you know, a food holiday or, you know, something like that. 
you know, none of us want that for you. None of us want people to have to give anything up. And so if there is a way that we know of that you can have that back, be it a product that we review, be it a recipe, you know, be it, you know, a place you can go, that's what we're here to share with you. Um, Mm -hmm. And in this particular instance, you know, I know that that recipe that made that way is the way to get that particular tradition back. And so that's why we're talking about it today. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Happy so Chinese New Year. Up, yeah. Happy Chinese New Year for everyone yeah. celebrating. And so you're the All rabbit, that. by the way. I know. I'll share an amazing picture that I took from Vegas. So it's just oh, like, yeah? Such, yeah. I mean, Bellagio has their cons- uh, conservatory, like their garden that has like all sorts of beautiful, beautiful flowers and, and cranes made of flowers. And oh, it was just, it's God. always so gorgeous there. That's why I, I just love walking through it. And you find this moment of peace, especially like very early in the morning when no tourists are out there. <laughs> not in Vegas, not really in the photos. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When no one's there and they're not drinking at like 8 a.m., which is a special kind of, of mm-hmm. Vegas person. Vegas, yes. Yeah, but um, it, that's why I love Bellagio's. It's just like this like little space away from everything that you can just walk through. And while it's usually very busy, it's also very gorgeous. So I took this picture of this like beautiful year of the rabbit thing mm-hmm. on here mm-hmm. but it's uh, a whole garden's worth of like year of the rabbit chinese new year celebration and it is just just go- maybe gorgeous, that can be like, our non- picture for, gorgeous. for the show today yeah i mean I, I could find some other stuff there's some really good pictures from this show um you know like a giant octopus that i found but <laughs> It's not the year of the octopus, Erica. <laughs> it is not. Oh, that transitioned us uh, right into our fancy food show, which is <laughs> which I was there in octopus. spirit. I, I was yeah. totally there in spirit, and um, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm I'm all ears. I want to hear all the good stuff. Lay it on me. So the fancy food show this year changed halls. It's much bigger. Um, I it was I only went for two days because I thought it would be as big as it was last year. But I probably should have gone all three days. Honestly, I probably could have enjoyed it all three days. So um, yeah, there were just like a lot of brands and a lot of brands that are there to preview either stuff for Expo West that's happening in March, or brands that can't afford to go to Expo West. So this is really their launch. They're trying to get retail partners for launches. Um, that are going to happen this year and for new products. So basically these brands come and it is a trade show. So people are looking for brokers to distribute their product. They're looking for retailers who can have their products on store shelves. They're looking for partners. Um, Press is very little of what makes up the show, but it's always interesting to see kind of the new products and to give you a preview of what's to come. Um, Lots of exciting stuff. Um, But the problem is, is that, you know, you can only take so much off the show floor. You can only take a bag per day, yeah. which is very limited. Um, especially since a pork rind company gave me like three bags of pork rinds. I'm like, that's a lot, you know? Um, well, it's better than so San didn't Francisco. Have a lot of room. When it was in San yeah. Francisco, they didn't let you take any bags out. I was like, yeah, okay, it was come really, on. really this hard. Is... Yeah. And I get what they're trying to do, but it makes it really hard because now brands have to ship product here. And that way I don't actually get to show you the product, Mm -hmm. you know, except for a video from the show floor. And some of the stuff from the show floor looks horrible. I mean, it's like people's iPhones in the background and people's lunches in the photo. It's like, that's not really what I want to show you. Um, So yeah, so unfortunately I don't have samples for a lot of the cool things that are happening, but you'll see them in the next few weeks on, hopefully on the show. Um, on Instagram as well. And hopefully we'll get Jules some samples too, as well. Um, but I just have a handful of things that I wanted to share with you. Um, so the first one, um, I'm going to get all the meat out of the way. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm just going to go is, take a little break. Here. <laughs> yeah. This is um, Volpe and uh, Volpe is um, really, really great prosciutto. They launched some chopped prosciutto that I've been making on my uh, Instagram stories. It just makes it really easy and I love easy things. And uh, what I love that they did is this package is all um, like recycled paper on the back. So it's just a paperback package that has a small lining. And so it's a really efficient way of cutting down plastic. And they're gonna try even harder to cut down plastic because prosciutto packaging is just like known for the, being this horrible waste of plastic. Um, but they are making Hamon Serrano, which is just an incredible version of um, like a prosciutto, a, a dried ham. Um, 
Yeah, Mount Serrano is just very typically very nutty and like acorny because that's typically what the pigs eat. Um, so yeah, it's just delicious. If you're a meat eater, you're going to want to look for this thing. Thankfully, in my sprouts, they have a lot of the Volpe brand, um, but it's it's pretty much everywhere across the country, but just really, really good product. So very happy that I could try that there. So I know that I'm going to eat it in the future. All right. So Octonauts is one of the brands that I wanted to show you. This is actually- a I love Octonauts. Just so good. Yeah. So this is a, a sea salt caramel dry roasted cashew butter um, oh, that they have, and it's gluten-free. It's not paleo, which I'm totally fine with, but they are launching- um, walnut oil as well so walnut oil has a really really low heat temperature so you can't I think like they had that so before they did okay um they have a bunch of things i'm just showing you the exciting oh, okay. things that i like oh from it. Um, okay so this is a, a low heat so this is more like a salad topper mm -hmm. or to put on breads or to use um with like um sauces or tossing pasta but i love walnut oil it's great um but they also launched a couple new things, which I don't have, and that is um, an almond protein powder, which is just yes. an almond and walnut protein powder, which is just um, upcycled walnuts that they're using for other things. Like, so they're making almond or walnut butter or walnut oil or whatever. And then the upcycling comes with this, it's basically just walnut powder and almond powder. It's a very, very clean protein powder yeah. because it's basically just the nuts. Um, but they're a great brand. Um, they're paleo certified, uh, non-GMO, um, grain, grain free, obviously it's just nut based, um, but they're a great company and I really, really dig them. And I was just really happy that they were there. Um, so I have snacks and samples yeah. and hopefully we'll yeah, work with them later. Yeah, they're super clean label. And so a lot of people who yeah. don't like protein powders are like, there's just too many ingredients and they've got, you know, there's the pea protein and the, you know, the yeah. whey and, and when you look at their protein powders, it's just like, oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, yeah, I really like their stuff. And they're late um, I love their um, labeling yeah. too. Like just, I love their octopus. branding. It's so it's cute. Super, super cute. Yeah. So, um, another brand that I met is out of New York. It's called the jam stand and it's just a jam, jam manufacturer. Um, but she had some really, really unique flavors, which is interesting. This is blueberry bourbon and this is raspberry jalapeno and um, they're just really, really delicious. And I love jam. And she said that this is a really good ice cream topper. Ooh, uh, yeah blueberry bourbon, but it's like blueberry bourbon and vanilla hints. This is raspberry and jalapeno with like actual jalapeno peppers and chili peppers inside. Anyway, I just, I, I love ex finding so exciting were those, jam. Were those their samples or do they, yeah, is that their the actual packaging? Nope. The sampling, the packaging is really pretty. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's just the samples that I got to spread on it. So. Cause like Justin's exciting. nut butter comes in that kind of packaging too. That's yeah, portable. You can eat that on the go. Right. But eating so jelly know. on the go was like a well, I didn't know if like you'd like I'm squeeze fine with that it, on the go, yeah. like squeeze it yeah. out on your, you know. Yeah, whatever. no, those were the samples. <laughs> okay. Just, just curious. I'm just trying um, to get a full understanding. And then you know how much I love ube. Uh, this is not really new, but it's new to me. Tea Drops, which is one of my favorite tea companies. It's literally just like packaged ground tea and sugar and flavoring. Um, oh, neat. They have an ube. And I just love anything Ube. And so this is one of the Ube things that I picked up to sample. Um, but she just did a redesign on her product, totally new. And um, it's fun. They did a Hello Kitty collaboration and uh, the Hello Kitty flavor is strawberry matcha. And I was like, oh no, now that you're not doing the collaboration, can we not get strawberry matcha? But I think that they're gonna work on doing a strawberry matcha, which is really cool. And she gave me a little Hello Kitty uh, pin because <laughs> I collect pins. It was really cute. Anyway, I just love following her over the years and her product's so good. I buy it all the time. Um, it's really delicious, but this is a new to me flavor because usually I just stick with like the matcha or the, like the early, the Earl gray ish flavor, but yeah. I just love tea. So love tea drops. Did you know people. that one of the finalists in the gluten-free cookie swap had a strawberry matcha cookie? Yes. Isn't yes. that crazy? Yeah, yeah, I love strawberry matcha. In fact, um, because of that recipe, I went to go get some matcha powder to recreate that cookie, and I still Ooh. haven't yet, but I'm very excited. Yeah. So I know we're going to talk about that later. I so. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, this is not a cookie, just kidding. <laughs> uh, so this is Oba, which is a new um, new brand. Look at, check out, peep that certified gluten-free logo. It's flour-free, and they're like, how do I best describe this? It's really interesting. So apples, egg whites, 
cane sugar and lemon juice. So it's almost like an apple meringue. Meringue, yeah. Yeah, so it's really interesting. They have um, a couple different packages. They have a stand-up pouch, and then they have these, which have these inside. So oh. it's almost like a crispy apple meringue. It sounds delicious. So yeah, so um, I'm going to have him ship you some of these so you can try. But I just really, he's like, yeah, it's a great just perfect snack and also yeah, my like, girl's gonna love eat those them. yeah and people can eat them like desserts because they're what's the protein on that apple. nothing because it's, it's got the egg in it egg whites yeah, yeah that's one gram interesting yeah okay yeah interesting i mean right. i think they're def they're made to be like a I mean, it's not not a treat. I don't want to say that they're treats. because that's silly, but just like not like a protein bar. No, no, no. Like, I know. I just am always yeah. curious. Like if you've got the egg whites in there, it's just like, huh, I wonder if you could squint and blur and go, oh, it's a little healthier than a cookie. <laughs> I mean, it is. Because it doesn't have the it flour. And it's got an it's got apple. It's apples. So it's got some fiber. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so the rest is all plant-based stuff, which I think you're going to dig. Um you know what? I had these at Expo West. They are hippie snacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bread crisps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those Love were good. Love them. It's, I Love don't know them. how they did that because they actually did kind of taste like banana bread. Like, well, yeah. I mean, that's No, but I mean, it's, no, it doesn't taste like banana. Them. It tastes like banana bread. And I know. And I don't know how they did that. Yeah. So I had only tried the original, and so he gave me a packet of the almond butter to try. Mm -hmm. But I, I love some of their other stuff. Don't get me wrong, but it's like cauliflower based, right? Mm -hmm. This is. Yeah. You don't like them. Um, I, I mean, like them I don't for what they are. Gravitate to it. No, I mean, yeah. Okay. Does yeah. anyone gravitate towards cauliflower crisps? Uh, but for what they are, yeah. I think they're delicious. Sure. Um, I just think they're a good brand as far as like the love getting it. the seasoning right. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. um, I like this the, the incredible. Puffs better. Hmm. Hmm. I don't. Okay. They're like tomato, tomato. cauliflower farts. <laughs> um, <laughs> God. now I don't like them anymore. Thank you. Now you shouldn't you just there ruined you it. You're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, this, these are delicious. The banana bread crisps. They have them in original chocolate and almond butter. And so I'm finally getting to try the almond butter one. Um, but I just love this stuff and I love the original. So I'm, I'm sure I'm going to love this as well. The other thing I want to talk to you about, I'm sure that you've seen this before. The Chi brand. Saw it it's, all over your Instagram. Sa Sasha in Chi mm -hmm. seeds. So healthy. As their protein. And um, it's a pork alternative, which is a little interesting, but they have original Italian herb, chi rizzo, and maple sage. So, so like breakfast. Did you like taste it? Yeah. And is taco. it like cold pork? Is that, no, is that the texture? Like what is it like? Ground, it's ground pork. So like the Taco Bell what? style ground pork. And it's like really chunky ground oh. pork. So um, is, I mean, it, is it like jackfruit kind of a texture? No. It's more walnut seedy. Texture. Oh, okay. Got um, it. And I dug it. And I think that it could be a, a good replacement for people who are attempting something else. Um, I think, I mean, it is not a spot on for pork flavor. It's got different texture. And I think that you can easily add the sauces, like the Italian herb. I think you could replace meatballs easily. I think just having it in a pork taco, if you know that it's, you're like, wait, this isn't pork. Sure. But the idea of it is really great. And it's a frozen product. Um, and okay. it's just such great protein. Does and it, really good yeah. for you. Yeah. Does it absorb the, the flavors like, like tofu does? Yes. Okay. Yes. But this already is flavored. Okay. So like, that's why they have the different ones. It's like, this yeah. is lightly seasoned for whatever you want to do. But like the Italian great for meatballs and the chai, the chai rizzo is what I had for like tacos. Um, but I really dug it. And I think that, um, it's, it's such a good high protein yeah. like paleo snack cool. that I'd if you want to replace meat, it's mm -hmm. awesome. So, um, and they're good people too, which is nice. Um, the other Always thing, helpful. <laughs> yeah. Because if you're jerks to me on the show floor, I'm not I interested. That. And then I'm like, yeah. I really don't want to support your product. Yeah. Um, this is super cool. I thought you'd really like this. It's called Veg, V E G G. Mm -hmm. And they are out of New York and um, they are vegan egg replacers, but for specific things. So they have four varieties one is for baking, 
One is just an egg yolk replacer. One is just for French toast. And then there's another one that I think is like a whole egg, except for a scramble. Super so, cool. All powders. Yeah, and I thought that you'd like this because, yes, because, you know, as you know, you, you have different parts of the egg that do different things well. Yes. So if you're only looking for yolk, this is a great replacer. If you're looking for French toast, which is how I use egg yeah. replacer, some of the egg replacers are horrible. Yeah. This, I'm really interested to try because it's made specifically for that. So, um, what is yeah, it made I from? That, uh, that fake egg stuff. Uh, so basically, either. Like, yeah. so this is, uh, all I'm sorry, I'm holding up the <laughs> vegan egg yolk, the yes. vegan egg yolk from Veg. It's fortified nutritional yeast flakes, dry yeast, uh, sodium alginate and Indian black sea salt. So it's a lot of like what the, hmm. um, okay. just egg is. Yes. Yes. And then this is the soy protein isolate probably to help coat the, um, the bread. And that one and is then which again, one? the fortified That's the French toast the, one. Um, French toast one. Sure. Yes. So again, each of these have something very different as far as what you should use them for. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have maybe two other ones that have different ingredients as mm -hmm. well, but I do love that they're like these single store packets. It's a really, really interesting and they're idea. Mm -hmm. Resealable and shelf stable. And he said that that's one of the yeah. selling points for his. Yeah, because I have like this the Vor um, Aquafaba yeah. powdered one, and it's also mm -hmm. so resealable, yeah. right? But yeah. I have a real problem with that one because I mean it's pricey, but it's worth it if it works, right? But yeah. every time I reseal the canister, it doesn't seem to keep the moisture out, and that mm. thing gets like cement, and you cannot. Mm you cannot keep using it because it just gets That's rock really hard. Great. And I mean, I'm literally like banging it on the counter. Like I, you cannot get the stuff out anymore because it just, and you absorbs. can't do that with your arm. I cannot do that with my <laughs> arm anymore. Again, I was, I had two good arms when I was trying to use this thing and yeah, it's just not, it's not usable. So, um, yeah, yeah not, not so good. So, so I would definitely be interested in using that and giving it. Yeah. Any this spaces. might be a good, because I, you know, I have a that huge article on my site that. about vegan egg replacers, and I have each one, like, what's, what each one is good for. So that's an, an awesome product to add to. Yeah, it. It so I'm going to have him does. send you some, and then you can test it, because I know that you're going to do pretty good with testing. Um, I had another product that I want to share, but I'm looking at the ingredients, and guess what it is? Guess what the suspicious ingredient is on this product. Oh, there are so many. I have no idea which one you're going to call out now. Oats. Oh, okay. I met right. with this woman and she was really super sweet and she has like this amazing gluten-free vegan snack yeah. mix. And I'm mm -hmm. like, cool. And then I was looking on the back and I'm like, oh, naturally gluten-free, blah, blah, blah. I was so excited. And then I got him back home and I'm like, oh, because oh, on the sample, there are no ingredients. So I had to like look on the website mm -hmm. and I'm like, mother trucker. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, cool, well, that sucks. Because um, half these people so, have no clue that none. this is a suspect, suspect ingredient. They just, they really Especially don't. Especially because no idea. if, guys, if you're not certified, like that means that I know that you have no idea what's going in your product. So yeah. I'm really bummed out because yeah. I was so excited about this to share with you this. It's a set of mixes that I think are just the most incredible snack mixes that I think would be so good. And then I'm like, mm. and it's because oat flour is awesome. It works so well. Mm. Um, yeah. So no wonder she was wanting to use it in her product. Cool. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh, well. Um, so, I mean, there are a ton more things and I'm adding to my Instagram stories every day at Celiac and the Beast on Instagram. And obviously as more product samples come in, because again, we can't take a lot off the show floor for this, for this particular uh, show, we will be showcasing them on future episodes uh, as well as, especially when we get more samples off to Jules. Well, thank you for that um, enlightening highlight reel there. That was really exciting. I'm excited yeah. to get to sample some of those, but those are some great yeah. finds you have. Well, thanks. It's almost like I was there. Kind of. <laughs> okay, but not. You were. So before we wrap up for the day, I would love to hear about how the gluten-free cookie swap went for you. Oh, yes. The gluten-free cookie swap. Such fun. Um, we wrapped it up last week with the big taste test. So if you recall what happened. So happens, jealous. I was so jealous I, I wasn't there. Well, you were um, getting hungover at the fancy foods. So that was... <laughs> 
<laughs> you had to do your part. Uh, I know I was teasing you, but, um, so yeah, so the way the cookie swap works is that, um, people submit their cookie recipes, um, at, at the gluten for cookie swap page and, uh, people vote on their recipes and the top 10 vote getters then submit their, uh, cookies by um, mailing in 24 of their delicious cookies to um, to me at a certain date. And I had 15 or 16 different um, taste testers. The judges would come and, um, and we all had um, this big cookie taste off that night and they had ballots and they were all judged. Yeah, you have like legit on, scorecards and everything. Oh yeah, the taste, it's a big texture, deal. Um, the mouthfeel, like whether or not there was um, a bad aftertaste of any kind, because as we all know, um, sometimes with gluten-free, there's like a, a telltale aftertaste and people are like, mm, this tastes gluten-free. If the cookie had that aftertaste, that's a big no-no. Um, and um, also appearance of the cookie. It has to, you know, has to have a nice appearance. Yeah. Um, and so these cookies all had to, you know, be judged um, one to five um, in order, you know, by each of these judges. And it takes a while because they all had to go through and, and um, taste all of the cookies. And I mean, it sounds funny, like people are like, oh, tough job or whatever. But, you know, it's, it is kind <laughs> of hard to, to be is. like a, I mean, you know, which cookies best and worst and, you know, whatever. And, 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 and I counsel them too. I'm like, you know, you guys might not be a big fan of chocolate or you, you know, chocolate might be your favorite or whatever, but you know, just because you don't love chocolate doesn't mean that you ding this cookie. You have to rate the cookie, yeah. you know, based upon all of these things. So anyway, it was, um, it was a lot of fun um, to to see people trying to struggle through this, and you know, th and they have a lot of angst about it because they know this is really important. I mean, there are thousands of dollars of prizes up for grabs. I mean, you know, Zojirushi yeah. and Pasha and Words with Boards and Sweet Apolita, all and, of those and things. And Emile Henri. I mean, of course, and GF Jewels. You know, there's there were a lot of prizes up for grabs. So these people who were submitting their recipes, um, you know, were taking it seriously. So we took it seriously as well. So the the top three vote getters, um, you know, the, in the, the ballots, the first place was candy cane cookie bars from Jill Sims. Um, they were so, they were so good. And by the way, I didn't vote. So, um, I got to just sit back and watch people struggle with the ballots, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I know, but you got to taste them all. So that's I all did, that I honestly. did, so I did, I know the second place was cranberry orange cookies, which was a really lovely, um, combination. Uh, if you have I love that combo, I, I make know. cranberry orange scones. Oh my God. Oh, I, so did, yeah. so, I never zest. thought about putting it in a cookie. It was a really, really yeah. smart, more smart choice. Um, and that was from Marcy Butler. And the third place was a turtle thumbprint cookie from, um, Jennifer Woods. And that was, it was a beautiful cookie, the presentation. Mm. And that was really pretty. Yeah. It looked um, really nice. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, they were all, I mean, and, and the difference between the third place and the fourth place was literally, I mean, like less than a handful of votes. I mean, even the cat liked it. So, I mean, it was just amazing. Yeah. So He's um, mad the fourth place didn't win. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was rough. It was a tuna cookie. <laughs> it was, the it was tuna a tuna cookie. cookie and the, the cat's tuna. like, why didn't why? the tuna cookie why? win? I know. Right. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was great. Um, all the, you know, the prizes are being sent out now. And, um, so you're probably going to see on social media when the people start receiving their prizes. Um, so jealous. Know, I know. I mean, some of these prizes are, I wanted to receive the prizes myself. And the sprinkles. I want the nonstop just sprinkles. Just like, I want to bathe Who doesn't want sprinkles. like hundreds of dollars of gluten-free sprinkles? Yeah. Like, yeah. I know. I'm like, yeah. why, why did I not enter this contest? But um, yeah, it's seriously, it was, it was a lot of fun and I, I cannot thank the sponsors enough because that's, you know, what makes the contest even more fun is to Do have, you want to run you know, through the sponsors? Do we want to give them all like, yeah, totally. Um, I mean, again, like, so the every, every, ever, so since I've been, ever since I've been doing this, this is the 10th year that I've, that, um, we've done this and Zojirushi has been a sponsor, oh, um, so every good. single year. Love and them. I know Zojirushi is amazing. Um, and then Pasha gave, um, a year's mm -hmm. worth of organic gluten-free, 
um, <laughs> vegan chocolate. Yeah. So you should like tuna. You cannot eat chocolate. Um, and uh, tuna. I know. Uh, words with boards, and um, I love I love their boards. And oh my God, I, I love know, our board. I know you got your words with boards. Oh, you had me at eat board. Um, the hand carved. That those are just the gorgeous boards. Um, and uh, Emile Henri. And those just mm. beautiful bakers, and of course the Sweet Apolita sprinkles. And that'll be, and that's they're a new sponsor this year, which is really great. Yeah. And then um, my company, GF Jewels, so people get to have some fun stuff to bake with. So lot, yeah, like I said, thousands of dollars in prizes. And then um, the the other folks who who um, got you know, were made a finalist, but didn't unfortunately didn't make it to the top three, um, all got gift certificates to GF Jewels. So I just wanted That's to so thank nice them for you. participating. Well, I just I feel bad. It's I want everybody to win. You do every year. I know it's such a fun thing that you do every year. And I, I just love it. I one day, one year I would like to be like, I want to be there and I want to like choose the winner. Let's make it happen. Like, let's make it happen. Yeah. And let's do a live video with them. Like, congratulations. Yeah, yeah we should. We should. Publishers we should Clearinghouse. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Cool. We we always get around like this, like this Price Waterhouse Cooper like announcement, like that. Yeah, all the ballots yeah. are like out there and everything. Congratulations! So it's been checked yeah. and double checked, but yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, well, it's cool. Good. So where um where can people see the recipes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, orders? good point. Thank you for making that. Um, so yeah, if you go to gfjewels.com and if you go to the blog section um of the website, or if you just type in cookie swap in the search bar, um, it'll come up and uh, if if you click on any of the tiles that have the pictures of the cookies, you can get to um, the actual recipes that were submitted by the uh, the folks that um, submitted the cookie recipes. So they're there forever. Mm. They're not, you know, you don't have to go searching through, um, you know, old social media or whatever. They're going to be there forever. So you can always find I them. I want you to make like a gluten-free cookie swap cookbook. Where yeah, it's yeah just I've like thought about that. Cookie swap entries over the years and it'll yeah. be like that Betty Crocker, that old school Betty Crocker blue ribbon cooking cookbook. Yeah. I swear. I think it's going to be, it'd be so cool. Yeah. Um, so a yeah, publisher actually, that. um, actually, um, approached me a few years ago about making a gluten-free cookie swap cookbook once. So I thought about it, but, um, it's a lot of work making cookbooks and it's a lot. Well, do you need more work, Jules? Hmm, I'm going to go with no. Know. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I kind of cookbooked out. I'm just right saying, now. I think it'd be a cool cookbook. It would but, be a cool, cool cookbook. Yeah. We'll we'll make it an ebook. That's what I'll do. Ebooks yeah. are a lot easier to make. Yes. Um, yes. But maybe I'll do that. We'll see. But yeah. I'll put that in my idea board right over here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Along with everything else. Um, yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks so much for um, filling us in on the cookie yeah. swap. Uh, congrats to all the winners. Congrats and to the winners. Again, um, you can find those recipes. We'll put it in the liner notes along with some of the links to the products that we talked about. And then obviously we will be showcasing even more products in the future. Um, so happy new year, everyone as well. Happy Chinese yes. new year for everyone celebrating. Happy new year. All right. Thanks for joining us for another episode of You Had Me at Eat. Remember to like, subscribe, and tell everyone about this show, especially if they're gluten-free, because I think that they'd enjoy it. And uh, stay tuned for future episodes. We're going to be talking a lot of research out in the uh, the gluten-free and celiac disease uh, world. So we want to share it with you um, on future episodes. So make sure you are subscribing so you hear every episode of You Have Me to Eat. Yeah, we have some fun interviews coming up, too. Yes, yeah, some super cool interviews coming up uh, with some cool people. So yeah. stay tuned. Talk to you soon.